The main character in the movie is named Larry, and he experiences failure in every area of his life. Even today, he misses his son's career day at school. Later, he meets up with his ex-wife, from whom he has been divorced. He gets together with an old friend of his wife who possesses a powerful personality. When Larry finds out that his son prefers to model his life after his mother's friend rather than after him, he becomes upset. Larry was upset because both his personal and professional lives had been disturbed. Now, Larry attempts to get a job at the Museum of National History after working a night guard there. Because he has nothing else to do, now, this job appears to be attractive to him. And the museum's business was decreasing, it was decided that the old guards would be removed from the museum. Only Larry would be appointed to this job. Larry receives the keys to the museum as well as manual instructions from the old guards. They tell him to turn on the museum lights at night and does not let anyone out of the museum. Larry doesn't understand their instructions, and the three guards eventually leave the museum. Larry was alone at the museum, and tonight was his first night shift. While sitting in the reception area, Larry hears a strange noise. He checks and later he notices that the area where the dinosaur skeleton was supposed to reside is now empty. He feels upset, and on the other hand, he notices the dinosaur in front of him. Larry begins to run in fear, and the dinosaur follows him. He soon understands that the dinosaur does not want to harm him, but rather wanted to play with him. Meanwhile, he discovers that many other creatures have returned to life, and he believes that something is wrong. Later, he began to study the manual given to him by the three guards, which stated that the African creatures should be kept caged and not let out under any circumstances. You need also be cautious of the monkey, as he steals the keys. Larry goes to see the African mammals and locks the door in the meantime. He discovers that he does not have his keys, which have been stolen by the monkeys. When Larry demands keys, the monkey giggles, but later gives Larry the keys. Larry closes the door and continues on, noting that many other creatures are now have been alive. There were Old West, Asian Rome there, and they were miniatures and their leaders fought each other. Meanwhile, there was a lady in a glass bottle who was an American native lady. Actually, all of the creatures in the museum, about humans have heard have come to life. After seeing all of this, Larry becomes astonished. Meanwhile, Larry is attacked by individuals from the Old West and Ancient Rome. Before they could do any more harm to Larry, a man riding a horse appears and takes him away. The name of that man was Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States. He states that the Egyptian mother of Pharaoh, along with the golden tablet, arrived at the museum in 1952. And because of that tablet, every night, all of the creatures have come to life. It lasts until the sun rises, and if someone steps out into the sunshine, it will turn into dusk. And everything in the museum would be damaged completely as a result. He warns Larry that everything must be settled before daylight. Meanwhile, Larry notices that the president likes the lady captured in the bottle. Later, the old three guards arrive, who worked here before. Larry complains to them that why you hadn't informed me about this earlier, that everything here come to life at night. I wouldn't continue the job here, and he walks out angrily from the muleum. Outside, he notices his ex-wife's friend and his son, who have come to congratulate Larry on his new job. Larry's son invites him to his school's career day once more. Larry thinks to resume his job after hearing this because he wants to be a role model for his son. He does not want to appear like a failure in front of his son. The museum's old guard advises Larry. That you must research everything in the museum so that you can handle everything easily. Larry does the same thing. He goes to the library and begins searching for information so that he can control the things. Later, Larry goes back to work on the night shift, attaching a bone to the car and putting it in front of the dinosaur. So, whenever the dinosaur comes into his life, chase that bone instead of teasing Larry. Larry, on the other hand, gives the lighter to the wild people who are attempting to start a fire. As a result, they set fire to everything around them, including their hair, but Larry puts out the flames. The monkey, on the other hand, steals Larry's keys and opens a window once more. Larry and the people of ancient Rome and the Old West, on the other hand, are shown battling, and Larry is unable to stop them. 
Later, he witnesses a wild thief take the keys from a monkey and flees. The sun rises, and the wild guy turns to dust as Larry pursues him. Meanwhile, the cleaning truck arrives and collects the ashes of that wild man. Because the museum was set on fire last night Larry was fired from his job by the museum's senior officer. Meanwhile, Larry's son also entered the museum. His son becomes disappointed after hearing this, but Larry doesn't want to lose this job at any cost. He begs one more chance from his senior officer so he could continue his job properly. Larry runs across a female employee who was looking for the lady who had been caught in the glass. She was impressed by her, and now Larry informs her that at night, everything in the museum comes to life. Female employee doesn't believe him. Larry says that I can arrange for you to meet the lady who is imprisoned in the glass at night. Because she also comes to life at night. She becomes enraged when she believes Larry is making fun of her. Larry knows his son is disappointed, so he goes to his wife's house. Where she advises him not to meet his son since he is disappointed in him. And I don't want my son to suffer as a result of your actions. But Larry tells his ex-wife that I'll take my son to the museum, where he'll have a great time. Larry now takes his son to the museum and informs him that around 12 a.m., everything comes to life. Nothing happens when it's 12 a.m., and Larry has to be ashamed in front of his son once more. Now Larry goes inside to check everything, and he discovers that the old guards are stealing everything. It was their old plan, and they hired Larry to make it easy for them to steal and blame Larry. And the objects hadn't come to life tonight because the pharaoh's magical tablet had been disabled. Now that his son has that magical tablet, Larry requests that his son to activate it. Meanwhile, the three guards rush to the Egyptian pharaoh chamber, where they are all locked up. Larry also arrives and releases the Egyptian pharaoh, who speaks English as a result of the years spent at the Cambridge. There has been a lot of research done on pharaoh, and now Larry had to save the museum. He gives a motivational lecture, stating that we should reclaim our museum from the old guards. Otherwise they would steal everything, and the world would be destroyed. On the other hand, two guards have been arrested, but one of them flees while attempting to take the tablet. However, as he starts his car, he sees that both wheels have been punctured by many ancient Roman leaders. The president and the bottle-captured lady have now arrived, and the thief rushes into the cart. He collapses with the president, who splits in two, but the lady fixes the president with the fire, since he was created with wax. All of them are now following the thief because they must get the tablet at all costs. Or else the museum's night world that comes to the life will be destroyed. In Central Park, Larry follows the security guard as he walks away with the tablet, and then he takes the tablet away from the guard. They needed to get back to the museum before it got dark because they were about to be turned into dust if they stayed out any longer. Now, everyone starts running towards the museum, and the female employee understands that Larry was telling the truth. They all arrive at the museum early before the morning, and the female employee is impressed with the glass lady. Larry introduces the glass lady to the female employee. The museum's news was broadcast because the museum had been severely damaged. After the museum's news is broadcast, the senior officer fires Larry from his position. He understands the museum's business increased after being broadcasted. Because the museum attracts a large number of visitors, Larry was reappointed. Larry becomes the part of that world that comes to the life at night. Later on, Larry visits his son's school later because it is his career day. Larry throws a party at the museum with his friends at night. And the guards who tried to take the items are assigned to mobbing duty, it was their punishment. Later, we see a TV commercial in which Larry is presented by an advertisement for his devices. Which he came up with while working as a guard at the museum. We can see that Larry has quit that guard's job and gone on to become a successful businessman after three years. Later, we show Larry coming into the museum from his office. Where the museum's owner informs him that everything has to be updated with new technology. All of these items are now old, and they will relocate tomorrow to a new institute. Larry decides to spend the evening with his friends, and when he arrives at the museum, he meets the president. He tells him that he, Pharaoh, and the dinosaur are the only ones who will be leaving the museum. The rest of the items will be sent to another institute, but the magical tablet will remain here. 
So, the sent items wouldn't come to the life again. The president was speaking with Larry when his phone rang, and as a result, the president became disturbed. In the meantime, the sun rises, and the president was about to tell him the secret to happiness. Larry misses everything the president said since he was on the phone. Later, we see Larry and his son at their apartment, prepared to eat when Larry receives a call that shocks him. The old civilization leader called to inform him that the monkey had stolen the magical tablet. And that everything had come to life as a result and we are in serious difficulty. Meanwhile, someone grabs his phone and his call disconnects. Larry says to his son that he has to leave, because his friends are at danger. He tells his son that he will send him the path, to the institution, the world's museum after searching from the internet. And that when he arrives, he will call his son. Later, he takes a flight to Washington and arrives at the institute, which is the best museum in the world. There are several departments, such as one dedicated to space and aviation and another to national history. And they are separated by a great distance, later on, he phones his son. After searching the way, he arrives at a building and must pass through a security system to enter. For that reason, he steals a guard's card and follows the path of his son's instructions. Because he has limited access to the signals, Larry's call disconnects when he goes down. As a result, Larry discovers the path on his own, where he encounters another Egyptian pharaoh. He was the older Egyptian pharaoh's brother, and he was a bad man. The Egyptian pharaoh's people will also attack Larry's friends who were locked up in a container. They were all standing in such a way that they were about to kill them, but after the sun rose, they were transformed into statues. Larry takes the tablet from the monkey's grasp, and the sun sets, and all of them, come to life once more. Pharaoh imprisons Larry's friend in a container and orders him to take the tablet, but Larry refuses. Pharaoh informs Larry about his plan to bring his army back to life by activating a code from his dead army when he takes the tablet. When his army arrives, he will have complete control of the world, but Larry grabs the tablet and flees. In the meantime, he releases an octopus who later helps Larry, and the general arrives and transports Larry on his bike. However, the people of Pharaoh eventually catch the general and place him in the container with them. Larry meets the first female pilot, who was a daring lady, implying that she had also come to life. She joins Larry and discovers a means to free his friends. However, Pharaoh's guards chase them. Larry walks into a gallery. He finds that the portraits in the room have come to life as well. Among them, Larry enters the body of one picture and the guards are chasing him as well. So, Larry and Amelia, the first lady pilot, emerge from the paintings and turn the image around to hang it. As a result, the guards are permanently imprisoned in the portraits. Pharaoh later calls those who were once thought to be wicked in history. He orders them to pursue Larry in order to collect the tablet. While the leaders of the Old West and Ancient Rome emerge victorious from a container's hole. The guards, on the other hand, catch them, as well as the lady pilot and Larry. Pharaoh grabs the tablet from Larry and tells him that he has one hour to figure out the tablet's code. He captures the leader of ancient civilization in another glass, informs Larry that if he doesn't return in one hour, he will kill all of his friends. Larry travels to the airspace museum to get the code, but the pharaoh notices him and believes he has fled. He sends his soldiers to follow Larry and the pilot and Larry are on their way, they come upon an Abraham Lincoln statue. The leader of Western Rome arrives at the same time, but is taken by a squirrel. When Larry and the female arrive at the airspace museum, everything comes to life. Everyone there starts their aircraft, but Larry and the female pilot arrive at Einstein first. The army of the evil leader also arrives, chasing them out. Larry was able to translate the code from Einstein, which was the value of Pia. Later, Larry is taken by the female pilot to the first built plane near the location where Pharaoh has captured the leader. Meanwhile, Pharaoh applies the code and calls his army, and the Western Rome's leader arrives, seated on a squirrel. He challenges Pharaoh, making fun of his size, and the leader responds by saying he has brought a helper with him. Later, the statue of Abraham Lincoln appears and attacks the army of the underworld, frightening them and sending them back. While on his way out, the statue of Abraham's leader tells Larry to challenge three evil leaders to see who is the actual pharaoh's leader. 
They attack each other when Larry does this. When Larry was about to leave, that female pilot takes up Larry's friends as an army for a fight. Larry notices the general, who we learn was the one who rescued Larry. Larry advises him to put the past behind and joins his friends. Later, Larry and Pharaoh battle, and during that fight, the female pilot discovers the tablet. She triggers the code, which opens the door and Larry locks Pharaoh there. Later on they close the door. Later, the female pilot arrives at the museum to drop Larry and his companions off. Larry later likes the female pilot, but warns her to leave before sunset, or she will turn to dust. She says that she knows and departs after hugging him. Later, Larry visits the museum, where he sees the president and reminds him about the key to happiness that he tried to convey to him. Larry informs him that he has discovered the key. Which is that the people with whom you find satisfaction and with whom you enjoy working are the key to happiness. After two months, Larry meets the museum's director and sells his company. He is hired back as a night guard, and the museum's hours have also increased. They hired people like museum actors, and a large number of people began to visit the museum. All were happy, and at the end, Larry discovers a girl who looks like the female pilot. He takes her on a tour of the museum. Later, in the year 1932, we see the archaeologist team here in Egypt. The archaeologist's leader knows about the sandstorm, which is why he tells his kid to take a seat in the car. When his son was going his feet slide and he falls down the hole as he walks. When they all arrive to save him, they discover that this is the same tomb they were looking for in Egypt. There were a number of mummies and a golden magical tablet. When they go to pull that magical tablet out, the natives tell them that these are all magical items, and that if they bring out that magical tablet, as a result everything will come to life, and they will all be destroyed. But the archaeologist ignores him and pulls out the magical tablet. Later, the scene shifts to the present, where Larry is still working as a night guard at the museum. He also becomes the head of the night programs and wishes to plan an event. Everyone was getting ready, and there were a lot of VIPs people coming. Larry, the president asks, have you seen a new man in Caveman? Larry doesn't understand when he arrives at the exhibition place and discovers a new caveman has been assigned. He resembles Larry and regards him as his father. The Egyptian pharaoh shows Larry the magical tablet while he is getting ready. He informs Larry that its color is changing in an unusual way, there might be a damage but Larry was occupied. He also says that we'll discuss it tomorrow. The event begins, and everyone begins to deliver their presentation. Later on, the magical golden tablet is shown, on which rust is forming. When everything comes to life in the museum, it begins to cause damage. They are acting strangely, and the president is pointing his gun at Larry. Now that everyone has forgotten who Larry was, the director stops the show. Larry was to blame for whatever spoiled the show. Larry, on the other hand, tells the director that he will work it out. Larry goes to the library late at night and begins researching the tablet. He learns that the old guard is the same kid who has hired him. The same child who traveled to Egypt with his father for the first time. We've seen that kid from the beginning. Later, Larry approaches the old guard, who informs him that while we were removing the magical tablet from there, the natives told us and said its magic would be finished soon. Which could be why its magic is fading. According to the guard, there were numerous archaeologists from all over the world present when we discovered that tablet. That's why the pharaoh's parents have taken in the England Museum. This tablet must be known to them. Travel to England if you want to learn more about this tablet. Larry informs the museum's director of all that has happened. Larry tells the director I have to take this magical tablet to England. Whatever went wrong last night, it was due to this magical tablet, which the director refuses to believe. Larry informs him that this magical tablet enables the things that come to life at night to come to life. If I need to look into all of this, I'll have to carry the tablet to England. However, the director claims that whatever happened last night resulted in your firing from the job. I couldn't help you with this and Larry says that the people of England don't know that he had been fired from the job. When Larry arrives at the Museum of England, he strikes up a discussion with the guard before entering the museum. Many of his other friends have also sent with the magical tablet. When they all come to life again at night, Larry tells them that they need to reach the Egyptian portion. 
Everything came to life as a result of this magical tablet, and they came across a dinosaur. They come into a well-known fighter who saves them from the dinosaur. Later, as they continue on their journey, they come across a terrifying snake with many heads, which they bravely fight. They go on, but their two companions are missing, and they begin looking for them. On the other hand, they notice that the magical tablet is causing more damage, and as a result, the president's hand has turned to wax. Other people's memories begin to fade gradually. They must approach the chambers of the Egyptian mummy who are Pharaoh's parents if they are to correct everything. That monkey, on the other hand, has been dispatched to locate those two lost companions. However, the monkey saves them, and Larry and his companions have arrived in the Egyptian's chamber. They meet Pharaoh's parents and inform them that this is a magical tablet that will be harmed if it does not get the light of the moon. It gets its power from the moon, if it is harmed, and no one can recover it. The warrior with Larry believes he can use it to locate his castle, so he steals the tablet from him and flees. Meanwhile, the guard notices Larry and the caveman who looks like Larry, and she takes them both into a room. From there, Larry and the caveman flee. The warrior arrives at the location where the show was being broadcast, but Larry and his companions arrive as well. When he sees Larry and his companions, he rushes to the roof and reaches for them. The tablet, on the other hand, was fully damaged, and his companions began to fall as a result of the tablet's damage. Larry tries to explain to the warrior that you are not real, that you are made of wax, and that you are alive because of this tablet. He tells the reality of this tablet, he says, as well as the fact that the castle you're looking for isn't in this world. The warrior realizes that Larry is telling the truth and returns the tablet to him. Later, Larry, after retaining the moon's buttons inside, stands in front of it, and, it becomes fully charged. And the its color transforms back to golden. After that, all of Larry's companions are fine as well. They decide to keep the tablet and the pharaoh here, and Larry warns that if they do, no one from your family will ever come to life again. But everyone was relieved because the pharaoh could find his parents here. Larry and his companions are thanked by pharaoh. They all take off and fly to the museum later. Larry wants to go to the museum before it turns morning. Larry leaves after the president says a few things to him. It turns morning and Larry leaves Larry is now a teacher after three years. On the other hand, the director who had been fired has been reappointed. One day, a guard from the England Museum approaches him and informs him of the tablet's reality. She informs the director that what Larry said was true, and she hands him the magical tablet. She claims that everything in the museum comes to life because of this magical tablet. Everyone in the museum is up late at night and having a good time. Larry stood outside watching everything with a smile on his face as he remembers the president's advice, and the film ends here.